From AI advancements to bug fixes, new gameplay to upcoming locations, there's always something going on in Star Citizen's development. So, like every month, I'm here to summarize the exciting bits for you. If you'd like a more in-depth read, check out my past livestream going over the whole thing with the community, or my playlist featuring every month report as they happen. And thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. In June, a new narrative-focused AI designer joined the team to begin working on shopkeeper behavior. In addition to these shopkeeper behaviors, Star Citizen is also planning on a multitude of behavior types for NPCs. These behaviors include commuter, dancing, hawker, janitor, and more. They've been a huge focus of the team over the last year or so, but we still don't get to see much of the improvement due to current connectivity issues. The tech team worked quite a bit on locomotion and animations, creating much more convincing transitions between movement and interactive objects. The team also worked on AI abilities to navigate in 3D, such as during EVA maneuvers and also with trolleys, which AI will use to load cargo onto player and AI ships alike in the future. They also worked on the subsumption editor a bit to fix bugs and improve the system more. This subsumption system drives the logic and decision making of the AI in the game. Think, if this, then that. In vehicles, the team has enabled the ability for AI to switch between various modes while flying a ship, such as quantum mode, missile mode, or landing mode. We're starting to see these additions in the weekly shows with dropships landing on planets, and now in-game in the latest update. The art team saw character work focus on high fashion designs for the Stanton system and the more rugged and worn down designs of the Pyro system. I'm sure many types of clothes will be developed exclusive to each system for different styles of play, as we've already seen plenty variations in Stanton. The ship art team continued developing the Banu Merchantman, which we've had a recent update on. I'll link that down below if you missed it. The team also finished the final art pass on an unannounced vehicle that has since likely been announced as the Anvil Centurion. The Argo SRV tugboat of the Verse entered the gray box phase, leaving it still a few quarters from completion. And development of an unannounced ship continued in the gray box phase as well. Weirdly, no mention of the Corsair this month. There are definitely a couple more ships we can expect this year that didn't seem to have any artwork in June. I don't usually cover this news, but it's something to be excited about. The next major 4.0 patch along with the Pyro system will be receiving regular updates between September and release of the patch. At least that's the plan. We'll see how it turns out, but if you haven't already checked out what's coming up with this latest big patch, what do you know? I've got a video for you. Again, engine is not my best category. I'll tell you what I can kind of make sense of, but you'll want to consult an actual game developer for this stuff. As always, we have some Gen 12 news here. Gen 12 is the name for the new rendering engine that will reportedly greatly increase the performance of Star Citizen on various computers. Plenty of work last month went towards HDR, volumetric cloud rendering, and atmospheric rendering as well. Hopefully this rendering engine will be completed by our fall update of 3.18. Besides that, I'm at a loss. So let's move on to the good stuff. First, the features team worked on some long-awaited improvements to the inventory system. First is a move all button that needed some crucial logic in the system figured out to ensure functionality. Another is being able to interact with items nearby on the floor and being able to move items directly from one point on your body to another. These are actually pretty simple features and they'll be coming later this year. But we were originally told that some of these obvious features weren't able to make it to the initial release, so it's nice to finally see them coming to the game. The team also worked on a similar system to the inverse kinematics foot placement system we see in-game that adjusts your limbs based on the surface that you're stepping on. This new system would be for hand placement to allow for dynamic vaulting, maneuvering, and control with believable animations. Grabby hands have been a thing before, 
but this seems like a more systemic approach to allow for a multitude of surfaces for us to interact with. Last month, the gameplay team worked on next steps to the salvage profession, including the grinder machines that the Vulture and Reclaimer have, the ability to crunch ships for scrap, and ship tractor beams. Because I don't know how many times it needs to be said, but the hull scraping laser tool will not be the only form of salvage gameplay in Star Citizen. If you'd like to know more about the full extent of salvage gameplay planned for the game, I have a video for that I'll link down below as well. Engineering and life support gameplay also proceeded well. The team are now able to show off relevant items, rooms, and doors in a management UI that's very, very early in design. The vehicle team worked on a redesign of vehicle restricted areas, which will hopefully be better than the various previous iterations, the latest one being both completely invisible and also occasionally fatal. Not great stuff. Further tweaks also continued for ground-based vehicle handling, and a rebalance of ship fuel consumption began. June 2022 will be the first month that Planet Tech was ever included in this section or the monthly report as a whole. Otherwise, the segment is also quite confusing, just like the engine section. Here, the team last month continued work on the Gen 12 renderer, porting over gas clouds, rivers, frozen oceans, refraction, and multi-pass support. They also continued adding support for Vulcan functionality as well. VFX programmers continued work on offline damage maps, which will maintain damage map queries using persistence. This may be related to salvage gameplay functioning correctly. The Planet Tech team focused on tuning the Rastar base building tool and automatic planet-wide river placement, as well as solving some glitches to unblock the sandbox teams which put together some of the locations we're seeing added to the game in these next few patches. The lighting team did some work on the new racetrack on Clio. This task was assigned to an onboarding team to get them up to speed, and has introduced a new surprise location to the game that was originally created by the XGR player community of Star Citizen. The team also continued work on the upcoming Colonial Outposts, integrating dynamic and player-driven lighting to the major new subset of locations we should be seeing next year. With the newest locations complete at the Reclaimer Derelict Settlement and Space Mission locations, the team progressed through the white box phase of the new version of Lorville. The initial city was the first in Star Citizen. Since then, many improvements and feature additions have joined the city development process. This new version of Lorville will be scaled up to take advantage of these improvements, as well as the upcoming addition of building interiors used for gameplay. Expect a vastly different experience on Hurston next year. The team also worked on new crash sites, containing the 600i and Mercury Starrunner derelicts, though they're only in the white box phase with plenty more to go. Montreal seems to have created a new in-game branding team. This makes sense as there are a ton of brands in-game consistently interacting with the players, from shops to food to weapons, to ships, all the way to planets. Companies are involved everywhere, and they need some consistency. The first task of this team is revisiting all landing zones to make sure it's easier for players to orient themselves, something that the cities do a bit now, but definitely needs to be improved for the new player experience. The narrative team is finally talking seriously about some missions more in-depth and replayable missions with a new archetype in the works for a future release. The writers also created and recorded several scripts for the vendors in Pyro, including lines that will support their future ability to offer players missions. In the Montreal Tools team, the Mighty Bridge rollout continued, bringing more teams into the fold to allow for easier location creation. The procedural location tool also progressed well, with a first version expected soon. TM. The asset scattering and environmental integration tools made advancements with a first prototype allowing artists to procedurally create destruction trails for long crashed and destroyed ships. This process actually took about a week on average beforehand, such as with the new Reclaimer Derelict added in 3.17.2 
but it's now expected to take about a half a day with this new tool. These tools that are continuously created and improved for the game continue to allow more content to be made simultaneously, something we saw before with Planet Tech as well. It's a great sign for these small points of interest to be catching up with that kind of efficiency. In June, the UI team worked on the new star map, with a focus on linking in quantum travel for additional information and displaying space clouds in the UI. They also upgraded the 3D UI card system to allow for better holographic interactive UIs on curved surfaces. The VFX team worked on several locations including the derelict reclaimer variants and the derelict outposts. They also worked on salvage effects and optimized the effects surrounding ground storms and how they affect game performance. This summer has seen the continuation of focus on gameplay such as salvage and engineering and locations like the new derelict ships and upcoming outposts. While we've heard recently about a lot of things being done to improve the new player experience, I didn't see as much in this report. And I'm still bugged by the lack of anything to do with the cargo refactor or quantum economy system. Regardless, I keep an eye out for those narrative additions and new possible AI interactions coming soon as well. Overall, a balanced month of progress, but not the most exciting. If you want something more exciting, I'd check out the April report you can find in the playlist link down below, as well as the rest of my monthly reports that I do every month. And if you'd like more content, check out my second YouTube channel, Space Tomato 2, or my live streams every week, where I discuss these things further, introduce new players to the game, and jump in game with my Oregon community. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I will catch you in the next one.